Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here for a discussion. What are we discussing, Dalton? We will be discussing James Joyce, one of my favorite authors. Yeah. A should. short story from Dubliners to Gallants. I just wanted to cut you off because I didn't want to hear anything about James Joyce today. Well, it's unfortunate because we're discussing a story by, by James Joyce. What are the odds? So, two gallons, James Joyce, from the collection of the Dubliners. Where would you like to begin with this? I have a main thrust that I think um, goes through this. Okay. <clears throat> Corley and Linehan, right? Linehan. So, Linehan means sorrowful. Okay. Corley is an interesting name. Okay. Apparently, it can break down as mirthful, which makes sense, right, with his character. Could mean belonging to Ireland, which makes sense, it according would. to his character. Also, it could mean something roughly meaning son in the shape of Thor. Okay. Or it could mean instigator. Even better. All of those sort of make sense with, with Corley's character, except for son in the shape of Thor, right? Okay. But the nickname that we have for Corley throughout this place is what? Go on. Mac. Mac is an Irish name, sure, but it's a surname. What does it mean? Do you know what Mac means? I don't. Son of. Okay. So son of in the shape of Thor, perhaps. What is Thor? God of thunder. I'll be damned. Hmm. Just interesting, just keep that there. Okay. Linehan, it is told to us, which you have to question always when a character's age is told to you. Okay. Linehan is 31. How old was Christ when he was crucified? You tell me. Tell me. Was he 31? No, he was 33. How old was he when he was baptized? I don't know, you tell me. 31. Okay. What is the weather like in this story? It's rainy, isn't it? I'll be damned. Hmm. Linehan is hesitant to mature. Um, he's wearing his slickers. On 33... If I can find in my, what? Hesitant to mature? Uh, hold on. He's wearing a yachting cap, a waterproof, and his breeches, his white rubber shoes, and his jauntily slung waterproof okay. expressed his youth. That is what is told to us. These things expressed his youth. Um, in fact, earlier in that same paragraph, we get this neat little quote when we're thinking about things in a religious context. Two young men came down the hill of Rutland Square. One of them was just bringing a long monologue to a close. The other, who walked on the verge of the path was obliged at times to stop. Walked on the verge of the path. What is the path? You tell me. The path is the righteous the path. Okay. The righteous path, the way. Walked on the verge of the way. Not quite on there. Not quite on there. He's learning though, right? Linehan, sorrowful. Linehan means sorrowful. Have you ever heard of the man of sorrow? No. So I searched it. What's that say? Uh, ch Chinese pianist? No, no, no. The, <laughs> the search term. Oh, abnormally large wangs. I just assumed that was a mistake. Sorry? No. Oh. You were running late. I had to do some scientific research. These things happen. What is searched here? Man of Sorrows painting. If you Google Man of Sorrows, you get a stupid band. But it is a classic painting. It is not a classic painting. It is the form of a classic painting. Okay. What are these paintings of? Looks like Christ. Well, that's Jesus, isn't it? Looks like it. What's he doing? Suffering. And he's showing off stigmata. He is. Man of Sorrows is a classic form of painting. A classic... I don't know what to call it. I, I've lost all my terms for art. But um, if you... So artists were commissioned to do scenes 
or things from the Bible. If you were commissioned to do a Man of Sorrows painting, normally it was Christ showing off some type of stigmata. Jazz hands Jesus. You've seen that. Um, so if you search Man of Sorrows and click on the Images tab, it is a depiction of Christ as playing stigmata. It is tempting, is it not, in this story, to think of Corley as the Christ-like figure. Okay. Because he's the, in this story, Corley is the main man. He is. And we are getting his narrative from one of his followers, right? This is more or less how the Bible works. Fair enough. We are getting the story of Jesus through one of his followers. Um, James Joyce, having grown up Irish Catholic, there's a guarantee he was very familiar with one text. Fair enough. The Bible. It is very, it is very familiar with everyone he, who's reading his writing. Fair. With everyone who is judging his writing. So it is very tempting to think of Corley as the Christ-like figure there. But... What do you know about St. John the Baptist? Not much. One, he was a famous priest before his cousin, Jesus, sought him out. Uh, oh, I, I can't think of the term for it, but yes, I, I know what we're getting at here. Uh, St. John the Baptist, John the Baptist is John the something else. It was basically before baptism became a trope of the religion. Uh, that's what he was in the, uh, the traditional Jewish sense. I can't think of the word for it right well, now. He, but, but he was a baptizer. Yes. Right? What do you baptize with? Water. Hmm. hmm. Whose story are we getting here? Whose story are we getting here? Um, I, I'd say more Lenahan then. It's Corley's story though, isn't it? Ah, but it, I, it's so much more focused on Lenahan. Two, John the Baptist was known for making his followers fast. Okay. Which is a strange thing to, to bring into this, but when Lenahan sits to enjoy his meal, how long had it been since he'd eaten? It's been a while, and it is a terrible meal. It was breakfast. Okay. He hadn't eaten since breakfast. This isn't. This story takes place at nighttime, does it not? It does. Morning to night seems like the right time for a fast, doesn't it? Lots of fasting happens during the daylight hours. Three, he illegally married his half-brother's ex-wife, which is not in the story a one-for-one -one translation, but it speaks to sexual rapscallery. Okay. Four, he died before Jesus. John the Baptist was, John the Baptist died before Jesus. Okay. Death in the Bible is the adoption of sin. When you sin, you are dead to the Lord. Dishonesty and theft are sins. Now, whence claim we these gallants twain? We find these young men wandering the countryside as the man of sorrows learns the way of converting young women into his sympathy. He's learning religion from Jesus. Corley. No. He's Jesus. Okay. Linehan is Jesus. He's learning these ways from his popular cousin. Okay. Um... A mere 22 lines after the, the line, some drops of light rain fell, right? So at the end of the story, after Linehan has gone on his own way and allowed Corley to basically practice religion, indoctrinate right. someone in that way, um, Corley presents Linehan with a small, shiny gold coin with a lustrous, golden disc. Corley presents Linehan with a halo. Okay. Went off on your religious tangent there, didn't you? Certainly something James Joyce might have been known for. I agree for you. Um, one other thing, though, James Joyce may have been known for. When you think about James Joyce, what do you think of? Religion. Religion? Yeah, that's I'd right. say Ireland. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. This is ripe with symbolism towards Ireland and things going on towards the Irish I, I, at this period of time in Ireland. Right. 100%. We get here two characters who uh, have basically inherited their little world, their little slice of Ireland, which is constantly in turmoil, constant problems. Uh, and we see 
somebody who thinks he's got this figured out. Corley seems to be, you know, he's got this whole plan, this great plan going on here, leading Linehan on as to how we're going to make things right. Linehan seems to be having a guilt trip with this. Uh, I would say he is the more immature of the two. I disagree with you saying that he is continuing to be immature. Linehan wants to grow up. Linehan wants a family. Linehan wants to have a decent life. But but he is not. But he is not yet because he doesn't know how to accomplish right. that. He's not been, but he's not been baptized into Corley's life. He hasn't been baptized yet, so that works. I just the first way you say it, I'm like, well, you're wrong. No, he's not an immature character. He is the immature character. He's but he is not, not wanting to out. remain immature. But you know, if he hasn't inducted himself into the religion, that's fine. We'll he's finding the way of the path. He is finding his own path. Linehan has a lot of pro I don't know what I'm talking. Linehan has a lot of problems with this. A lot of this story is about him just trying to break this down, trying to see if it will work for him. This is the mistrust of Ireland. This is the mistrust of the things that are going on here. But in order to be successful, in order to have this greater good, this greater life, he has to make these sacrifices. Sacrificing what? Sacrificing this idea of his own you know, pride, uh, this idea of his own self, if you will. Perhaps his innocence? Perhaps his innocence. And accepting this grand plot from Corley. And in the end, with the presentation of the gold coin, or the halo, if you will, he realizes it is a success. Because there's a lot of doubt in his mind up until that point. Is it going to work or not? And it works. So, Irish nationality, religion, James Joyce. I say the three of them all work in this. And it's absolutely riddled with Irish symbolism as well. We get one big thing here, one other character beyond the maid. Uh, they, what, what are they, are they, slavy? Is that what it is? Slavy? Slavy? Is that the pronunciation? I'm not Irish. What, what, where, where are you going? I'm just saying that, that was a little tangent there. The maid, slavy, or slavy? That's just what they're calling her. I know. Okay. But how would you pronounce it? Slavy. Slavy. Uh, there's one other character that we get here. That's the harp player. The harp being a major national symbol of Ireland. So we have to take that into account that we have to be taking some respect towards this is Irish nationality that we're working with here. Well, yeah. So one thing that we are definitely guilty of from time to time is just recognizing symbols in a piece and not really going that next step and saying, okay, so what is the what is the consequence of that? Okay. So I think what it could be here is twofold. I think that there is perhaps, and let's, let, I've got them both written down, so I'm not going to lose them. One, is this a commentary, because Joyce lost his religion. Okay. Is this a commentary on religion as a game? So when you really look, so I'm, I'm 34. You're and old. you're 28. 29. 29. Twice as old as me, really when you really break things down. Were we to go around the countryside claiming to be the harbingers of a new religion, would people believe us? Probably not. But in that time, maybe young so. men, not maybe so. I mean, Jesus was 31 when he started his church, okay. got baptized. Um, as a young man, young-ish, now, obviously, the thing, he's going to be a little bit older in those days, but men in their 20s, okay, men in their early 30s, were looked at in this way. People do that today. No one's going to believe them. So is this a commentary on religion as a game? Religion as a... Uh, uh, a con. A con. A, it's possible. A convenience man. Uh, and, that, and that seems to be... A, I hate you so much. That seems to be one of the big problems here that Lena Han is having with this. Is this right? Is this the way to do it? Uh, which you could argue, you know, if Lena Han is our Jesus figure in this, that's what you're arguing, correct? Uh, did he bring something new to the table here? Did he take the the classic sense, the classic lessons that he learned from Corley, and just kind of spice them up a little bit to make them more moralistic, more gallant, if you will? Because we don't have two gallant characters in this. That's sweet irony in the title. But well, did Jesus make changes to make it more approachable? To make it a new idea, a new Or concept? was Jesus just the keen salesman? Just basically rehashing the old things. That's what he's learning from Corley, yes? 
Yeah. He's learning the tricks of the trade through Corley, but he's going to rehash into his own because there are things he does not agree with. So the the thing so this would have been so if this is at his baptism. Okay. If we're looking at Christ at the baptism. It's often been said, it's often been conjectured that if the character of Jesus in the Bible had come back 2000 years later and seen an entire religion growing around the things that he had said when all he thought he was doing was fulfilling the law, he would have been taken aback. Okay. So, is this a commentary that the con is the religion itself? Would Christ, on that fateful day of his baptism, have some doubt? Have some doubt. Would he question himself? Because the, the big thing Linehan seems to be struggling with is not just that this is a no return path. He's questioning his own worth. Okay. Is he a loser because of this? Fair enough. Th those questions seem to be there. Am, am I wrong about that? Uh, there's not. I, it's cleverly disguised and basically, you know, his worth he's talking about. Uh, he's wanting to start a family. He's, you know, wanting to go on this straight, narrow path, but it's never going to get there. He is never going to make that. He's feeling bad about some of these things that Corley's doing. Is this the right thing to be doing? But it's the way to survive. It's the way to go. So he comes to accept it. He, he chooses a sacrifice and he goes with it. Did Jesus have a family? Yes. No. No. I didn't know what you were going to play with here. Do you want the whole Just, Mary Magdalene bullshit? Oh, no. He had a lot of brothers, though. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, so, I think one of the things that we are left to play with here is that idea of religion as a con. Okay. One of the other things that I think we're left to play with here is the Irish religion is the true religion of Ireland. The lower class getting one over on the upper class. Okay, and that's clearly what we're seeing here. Is that the street version? Because I think through a lot of Joyce, we are left with the real Ireland not being the hoity-toities. I agree with you on that. So is the real Ireland the underclass? And in that, is the real religion of the Irish the underclass getting one over on the upper class? Would have been a bold statement at the time. Would have been the type of thing that you really would have felt compelled to encode in literature. Bury on in there. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, I can get behind it. So, where do you want to go from here then? Do we have any more that we want to add into this here? I feel like I'm still waiting for an Adrian point. Well, those are my points. Well, I was waiting for a big one. Like, there's always another one. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Those weren't big enough for you. Do I need to do some more Googling? I like it. I like it. Again, um, I think there's a lot to be said about uh, Irish nationality in this. That's clearly a Joyce thing here. Uh, we have inherited a world that basically cannot be trusted, and we are being... Lena Han's having a bit of a moral con conflict. He wants to be that good Irish nationalist. Nationalist? National man. The good Irishman. But he has to do some seedy things to get there. And is that the right path to be following? He doesn't know, but it's sure as hell going to be working. Right. So is this a commentary that that is the, the only path? Is this the commentary that that is Ireland? I think so. I think so on that. I like the idea of, you know, this being Jesus learning his, you know, following Jesus' baptism into this. It plays well. Uh, it's something I really didn't dig into, but I really like that. Is there anything more that we can add to that, though? That's the main thrust I've okay. got. I, I, I think you're right on track here. There's a weird, weird amount of uh, sexual tension in this here, and maybe that's just talking about, you know, the uh, innocence of Linehan. Uh, for a while reading this, I had to stop and go back because I thought we were talking about prostitution which is interesting as well. I'm not so sure that we're not in the same yard okay. as prostitution. Does that make sense? Like, I'm It's even mentioned at one point that I, I can't remember if it was Cor Corley or Lena Han's uh, ex, basically, had become a prostitute. So it's being ingrained into the reader's mind that this is a possibility here. 
But then we're talking about the exchange of money between, you know, the maid and Corley, but the maid's basically just stealing it. Uh, I, I think prostitution is coming into play here as well. Now, does Lenahan see prostitution as a, a terrible thing, an unforgivable? I don't believe so. No. And that's a good thing. That's going to play off our biblical reference as well. Right. Basically, everybody has good within them. They can be forgiven. You're just doing what you have to do to survive. But if you start following this path, you do what you have to do to survive, it'll all be forgiven. It'll all be fine. You can make a life for yourself. I'm going to agree with you for once in my life. I Did like you notice it. when this story takes place? Beyond day and night? Right. Uh, it's late evening, and then Corley, not Corley, Lena Han basically walks alone for most of the night. It's August. Is it August? Yeah. Okay. What time of the year is August? Fall. Looking at the fall of things? Well, so it, it, it's also the end of summer. Okay. So the summer's the time where you're really, so the summer of your life is your, your 30s and 40s. Okay. The summer of your life is when you've got to do all of the prep. All the right. fall is when you harvest. Okay. So you're reeling in the work to start collecting. Okay. You're reeling in you're reeling in the deposits to start the living. Okay. And we do see in the end of this, we see the harvest. And I I so far have never really enjoyed James Joyce. This is okay. This has some worth, and I kind of like it. And I really like that ending. We finally get a full wrapped up ending with this. We see the gold coin. We see the profit. We see the harvest. It works. We see the what? The harvest. No, at, before that. The profit. The profit. Mm. Well, well, I'll you're just playing be. with words. Anyway, do you have anything more you want to say about this? That's my, that's my main okay. thrust. I, I think he hit it on the head there. I think uh, the religious concept behind this is damn good. I okay. feel bad for focusing on Irish nationality, but that's fine. I took the easy route with James Joyce. But I think it works, and I like it. So you, I have nothing more to say about this harp. at this point. Harp. You brought a harp to the table. I brought a harp to the table. There's nothing else that you want to talk about I brought about a this. harp to the Last Supper. That's what I got here. You good? Yeah. All right. So if you like this kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Give this video a like as well, and let us know what you think of Two Gallants by James Joyce, and James Joyce in general for that matter. And if you'd like to help us create more great content like this here on Strip Cover Lit, there's a link as always to our Patreon to be found in the description below.